In SQL Server, triggers are special type of stored procedure that is automatically fired or triggered when a DDL or a DML command related to the trigger is executed. Triggers are commonly used to maintain data integrity, control server operations, or auditing to strictly implement business rules. For this lesson, we will focus on understanding and creating DML triggers to perform basic auditing actions on a table when DML commands such as insert, update, or delete operations are being performed. Hi, this is Joy Edgo, and welcome to Lesson 12 on Designing Database Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server 2022. To demonstrate these concepts, we will be working with these three tables. The products table is the primary table to which our triggers will respond. And then, the product audits and the product price history tables will be used to log all the activities and changes we made to the products table. To begin, we will create an after trigger on this products table that responds on either insert, update, or delete to make logs to this product audits table of what product was inserted, updated, or deleted. And then, record the date it was performed, who is the system user, and what application was used. Also, we'll create an after trigger to keep track of the changes in the product price, and then record the date it was changed and who modified it. Please note that all these tables are empty to begin with. To create an after trigger, type create trigger and then the desired name. I'll call this trigger insert, and then the keyword on to specify the table you want this trigger to react to, in this case, the products table. After insert means after an insert has been made to this products table, the succeeding SQL codes get executed. So what we want to happen here is to insert a new log into the product audits table the following information, what product was inserted, when it was inserted, who inserted it, what application was used, and what operation was performed. So how do we know these pieces of information to begin with? Now, here is what you need to understand. When a trigger fires, there are virtual tables that hold the values of the data before and after the modification in the target table. These tables are called inserted and deleted tables. So, we can access these virtual tables within our trigger code and work on their data as a set like a regular table. For example, I could select all the columns of the newly inserted record like this. So, for this instance, I only need to create a log of the newly inserted product ID, followed by the date of the insert, login name of the current user, the application name for the current session, and a character I to denote that the operation is insert. So now, I'll execute this code. Note that DML triggers can be seen under the specific table folder it was created for. So to test how it works, let's perform an insert command to this products table. Now, notice what happens as I execute this. After a successful insert was made into the products table, the trigger fires and created a log of this newly inserted record. The system date and time, my current user account, and the application I'm using which is the SSMS query editor. Okay, let's try another one. And it works great. Note that you can have multiple triggers acting on the same table. For example, I could create another after trigger, trigger delete, that fires every time a delete event happened on the products table. Almost the same as before, but this time, I want to create a log of this delete operation. I'll execute this code to create this trigger.
Now, let's try deleting an item from the products table where the product ID is 2301. And as you can see, product 2301 has been deleted in this products table. And in response, the trigger delete fired to insert a new log of this operation. And now, to create a trigger that fires after an update operation has been made to the products table, I'll create this trigger update on products. But here's the catch. The update trigger works slightly different than the insert and the delete triggers. We know that there are inserted and deleted virtual tables that we can use to check the recently inserted and deleted items. But there is no virtual table that called updated to get the recently updated record. So the approach is to select the record that exists in both the deleted and the inserted tables at the same time. That's how the update operation works. The old record gets deleted and a new updated record gets inserted. And to do this, we simply use the inner join to get only the record that exists on both virtual tables. And of course, we can use either the inserted or the deleted ID since they are just the same. And I'll change this to U, which means update. I'll execute this code. And now let's test if it works. I'll issue an update command to this products table and set a new item name of branded wireless mouse 2.4 gigahertz for this product ID 2302. I'll hit execute and we were able to successfully update the product's item name and at the same time created a log of that operation. In SQL Server, the update statement also works as a trigger function. The update function is used anywhere inside the body of a transact SQL insert or update trigger to check whether the trigger should execute certain actions. For example, I could create another after trigger that reacts to the update operation, but this time I will be very specific as to only what field I want to monitor for changes and not the entire table. Say, I want to keep track only of the changes in the unit price field and create an audit trail for these changes every time they happen. I'll create a new log of an old price and the new price, the date it was modified, and the system user who updated the price. So I'll call it trigger update price. Now inside the body of this trigger, I'll check if an update was made only to this unit price. And if so, I'll insert into this product price history. And same as before, I need to create an inner join for these deleted and inserted tables. And then I'll get the product ID either from the inserted or the deleted tables. They are just the same. However, for the previous price, I'll get it from the unit price of the deleted table. And then the new price or the current price I'll be getting it from the unit price of the inserted table. And then the current system date and the system user. So I'll execute this code. And now let's test if it works. Please note that we already have four different triggers acting on the same product table and two of which are update triggers. Now, I'll try to update the unit price of this product 2302 and set it to a new value, 20% less. So now, observe what's going to happen to these three tables as I execute this code. Looking at the products table, we have successfully updated the unit price from 350.95 to 280.76. For the product audits table, 
a new log of that update operation has been recorded successfully as well. And then, a new entry has been added to this product price history table where we can see that product 2302 drops its price from 350.95 down to 280.76 last May 4, 2023, modified by this user. Another type of trigger is called instead of trigger. But unlike after trigger, which fires after the action like insert, update, or delete has already happened. Instead of trigger fires before the execution of that action that fired it. It means that instead of performing an actual insert, update, or delete command, you can do anything else. Consider this example. Suppose that you don't want any user of your database to delete a product. If someone issues a delete statement to the products table, instead of actually deleting the record, you can create an instead of trigger that intercepts this delete command and only marks the record as inactive instead of actually deleting it. So I'll create a trigger called trigger no delete on products. And then instead of delete, I'll perform this. I'll update the products table and set the active field to zero where the product ID is in the deleted table. I'll execute this code. And now, if I try to issue a delete command to this products table, notice what's going to happen to the products and the product audits tables. Deleting the actual product didn't happen. Instead, it was updated to become inactive. Also, an update log was created in the product audits table. You can also experiment with different combinations of insert and updates. What we've covered here in this lesson are just the basics of triggers, and in particular, the use of DML triggers to perform basic table auditing. But you must know that there's more to it. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've learned something of value here, because up next, We'll discuss transactions and the acid properties of RDBMS. To help this channel, please click the like and subscribe button for more video lectures just like this. This is Joy Go, and hope to see you again in our next lesson.